In this video, I use data to show the rise and decline of Team Speedway in the UK, with a focus on the post 60s period. I finish by looking at the current issues which face the sport and my own conclusions as to what will happen in the future. UK Speedway started in 1928, and by 1930 there were two leagues supporting southern and northern locations, with names that were to have long lifetimes in the sport, such as Bellevue, West Ham, Wimbledon, Wembley, Coventry, Edinburgh and Glasgow. Post-war represented the first golden era for the sport, and is best represented by some example attendance figures in 1946. West Ham often had 80,000 in attendance in a stadium which could hold 120,000. Wembley had an average attendance of over 50,000. Wimbledon had 42,000 people in attendance with an estimated 10,000 more locked outside. Speedway's popularity dipped in the 50s with heavy entertainment taxes of 48% while football enjoyed a lower rate of 15%. Also there was the growth of TV. By the mid 60s Speedway started another golden era with the creation of the British League in 1965. In this golden period Speedway was the second most popular spectator sport in the UK after football. In 1966, England won the Football World Cup. As might be anticipated, the BBC sports personality was Bobby Moore. But surprisingly, hat-trick hero Jeff Hurst was beaten into third place by a speedway rider. Barry Briggs, who won his fourth World Individual Speedway Championship that year, came second in the BBC list despite not being British. This was the last example of Speedway achieving a top three position in this review programme despite a number of subsequent British world champions and Ty Woofenden winning three times by 2018. Using 1996 as a starting point, I take a data-centric view of the popularity of UK Team Speedway by mapping the number of locations around the country where good quality league racing could be seen by year the subjective term good being considered as the top two divisions discounting any league aimed at rider development. This demonstrates what is well known that Speedway went into a significant decline from the early 80s to today where it is struggling to maintain an existence as a professional sport. 1966 start at 19 the 19 locations competing this year consisted of 8 locations still in existence in 2022 at Bellevue, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Kings Lynn, Oxford, Poole, Sheffield and Wolverhampton. Of the locations no longer in existence in 2022, 3 locations were in London at Hackney, West Ham and Wimbledon and other locations at Coventry, Cradley Heath, Exeter, Halifax, Long Eaton, Newcastle, Newport and Swindon. 1967, stay at 19. 1968, up 9 to 28. Creation of a second division adding nine new locations at Nelson, Teesside, Plymouth, Rayleigh, Crayford, Canterbury, Reading, Weymouth and Berwick. 1969, up 5 to 33. Further expansion of the second division with new locations at Crewe, Doncaster, Eastbourne, Long Eaton, Romford and Ipswich. 1970, up 3 to 36. Further expansion of the second division with locations in Bradford, Boston, Rochdale, Workington and Peterborough, but the fatal loss of Nelson. 1971, Stay at 36. Three new locations at Hull, Sunderland and Birmingham, but a fatal loss at Doncaster. 1972, down 1 to 35. Three new locations at Barrow, Ellesmere Port and Scunthorpe, but four fatal losses at Romford, Rochdale, Wembley and West Ham. 1973, up 1 to 36. Stoke is a new location. 1974, Stay at 36. Rye House is a new location, but a fatal loss at Rayleigh. 1975, 
up two to 38. Two new locations at Mildenhall and Paisley, but a fatal loss at Sunderland. 1976, down one to 37. White City is a new location, but a fatal loss at Crewe. 1977, up one to 38. Bristol is a new location, but two fatal losses at Cope Bridge and Paisley. 1978, up one to 39, maximum. Milton Keynes is a new location. 39 clubs represents the high watermark of Speedway locations. 1979, down two to 37. Three fatal losses at Barrow, Bristol and White City. 1980, stay at 37. 1981, down two to 35. 1982, down one to 34. 1983, down one to 33. 1984, down one to 32. Arena Essex is a new location, but a fatal loss at Crayford. 1985, down two to 30. A fatal loss at Weymouth. Also significant was the end of the World of Sport TV programme which covered Speedway. 1986, up one to 31. A fatal loss at Ellesmere Port. 1987, down three to 28. A fatal loss at Boston. 1988, down 1 to 27. A fatal loss at Canterbury. 1989, stay at 27. 1990, down 1 to 26. 1991, down 1 to 25. A sad loss for London Speedway with a fatal loss of Hackney and Wimbledon. 1992, down 1 to 24. A fatal loss at Milton Keynes. 1993, down 2 to 22. 1994, down 1 to 21. 1995, stay at 21. Due to many loss-making locations, there was a move to a single league for this season and 1996. 1996, down 2 to 19. 1997, up 5 to 24. A return to a two-division format, with the top tier being rebranded as Elite League, with sponsorship from Sky Sports, and the prospect of future coverage. A new location on the Isle of Wight, but three fatal losses at Cradley Heath, Middlesbrough and Hackney. 1998, down 2 to 22. Two fatal losses at Bradford and Long Eaton. 1999, up 1 to 24. Sky Sports started live coverage of Elite League meetings. 2000, stay at 23. 2001, up 1 to 24. A new location, Trelawney in Cornwall. 2002, up 2 to 26. A new location, Somerset. 2003, stay at 26. 2004, down 1 to 25. A fatal loss at Trelawney. 2005, stay at 25. 2006, stay at 25. A new location, Redcar, but two fatal losses at Exeter and Hull. 2007, stay at 25. 2008, stay at 25. 2009, down two to 23. Three fatal losses at Reading, Isle of Wight and Mildenhall. 2010, stay at 23. 2011, up one to 24. A fatal loss at Stoke. 2012, down one to 23. A fatal loss at Newport. 2013, stay at 23. 2014, down one to 22. 2015, down one to 21. 2016, stay at 21. Due to poor viewing figures, Sky Sports stopped their TV coverage. 2017, down 3 to 18. Top tier rebranded as Premiership, with second tier as Championship, mirroring football. BT Sports started their TV coverage. A fatal loss at Coventry. 2018, stay at 18. A fatal loss at Rye House. 
2019, stay at 18. Two fatal losses at Arena Essex and Workington. 2020, no speedway due to COVID. 2021, down 1 to 17. Eurosport started TV coverage. A new location at Kent, but three fatal losses at Swindon, Somerset and Eastbourne. 2022, down 1 to 16. A speedway miracle occurred with the resurrection at Oxford, but two fatal losses at Kent and Newcastle. It is interesting to compare speedway location maps of 1978 and 2022. From a very healthy state where most centres of population had a nearby club, the 2022 picture is extremely fragmented, with no speedway presence within London and the southeast of the country, and the Tier 1 locations which could be reasonably called a Midlands and North England league. So what issues have led to this decline? I'll list the key ones below in groups, but if you want to understand more about them, these have been well documented elsewhere, so please see the further reading slide at the end of this video. Firstly, issues related to the fact that a critical mass has now been lost. This means that there can be a big distance for supporters to attend meetings, especially away from home, meaning lower attendances. The best riders don't ride in the UK anymore, diluting the quality on show. The riders that do ride now have to double up and guest to survive financially, diluting the concept of a team sport. It is difficult for the next generation of riders to get to a competitive skill level. There is little or no mainstream media coverage to keep the sport in people's minds. Secondly, issues related to the spectator experience, including those watching on TV. It's a weather-dependent sport like cricket, so subject to delay and cancellation. The sport no longer has a professional image with funny rules which change each season. The stadiums are often in unattractive locations which can be difficult to get to firstly and once you've arrived offer a very basic level of comfort and facilities. Is the crowd sufficiently engaged and entertained between races, especially when there are delays? Weekday race nights are not good for families so discouraging the next generation of supporters and attendance in general. Thirdly, issues related to spectator demographics. The sport has a working class background and more worryingly is increasingly ageing with few in their 30s and 40s. So literally the fan base is dying off. These viewers are not particularly attractive to potential sponsors which are really important in modern day sport. Fourthly, other issues related to the stadium. Speedway is often linked with greyhound racing which is also a sport in decline. The Speedway Club is often a tenant in the stadium and the stadium owners can make more money by selling the land. Noise issues, especially in urban locations, leading to conflicts with neighbours. The track needs to be well maintained to get decent racing and this can be difficult and expensive to achieve. The need to provide medical cover can be difficult. These are my conclusion on what will happen to Speedway as a sport. As there will be TV coverage and important income through Eurosport until 2024 or maybe later, hopefully Speedway can limp along to see the centenary of this team sport in 2028, even if there's a need to fall back to a single professional league, as happened in 95-96. However, I suspect that soon after 2030 there will no longer be professional team leagues, just a development style league as per the current Tier 3. One-off meetings at a professional level may continue at certain venues, such as the individual Grand Prix at Cardiff, with national team meetings and invitation events at Bellevue. I hope that I'm wrong. <laughs>